Hello, Michael Swain here after Kansas basketball's 72-52 loss to Cincinnati in the Big 12 tournament here at T-Mobile Center. That was not great, and I think any Kansas basketball fan that has paid attention to the team news heading into this one had an idea this game was coming. Kansas enters this one without Hunter Dickinson, without Kevin McCuller. Dickinson is recovering from a dislocated shoulder he suffered against Houston last week. McCuller, it was decided they're not even going to play him this week because they're not going to have Dickinson. And so why have McCuller play and potentially risk you know, hurting his bone bruise even more when the star big man Hunter Dickinson isn't going to be available to play either. So KU, you know, for all intents and purposes, punts on this Big 12 tournament. Um, you could argue, is that good, bad? I think it's probably the right decision. Kansas did not have a ton to gain from the Big 12 tournament. But I will say this, and I thought Bill Self's comments about it post-game um, were pretty interesting. He mentioned that Kansas needs to find its swagger. And typically the Big 12 tournament, I feel like, is when Kansas can find its swagger. You think about the team that won the national title a couple years ago, and they got their swagger here. You know, I remember talking to Remy Martin. It was right back here. You know, he had his Popeyes box in front of him, the Big 12 tournament champion hat on his head, and he talked about wanting to go and cut down more nets. And you could just feel that the confidence had built from Remy over the course of the weekend here and the team in general, and they found themselves. And what they do, they went on a run. And the issue for Kansas right now is that the opportunity to get the momentum to get that confidence is now gone because Kansas does not have Dickinson, did not have McCuller, and basically played with a makeshift team out there. And the one guy that deserves a ton of credit is K.J. Adams. You know, you can say a lot of things about him. Is his fit perfect next to Hunter Dickinson? No. Um, is he the perfect foreman in, in modern college basketball? Probably not. But, dude, I mean, he just gives 100% energy every game, and he deserves so much credit because – on a night when felt like kind of KU checked out, he did not check out. And I think he deserves a ton of credit for his performance. Finishes with 22 points, ties a career high, does it when KU needs him the most. And, you know, he just deserves a ton of credit. And look, other guys didn't show up. You know, Johnny Furphy really didn't have a great game offensively. He's really struggled shooting the ball as of late. Dewan Harris has not looked great as of late. Late in the season, wonder about the minutes he's played. Does he still have the legs? Uh, Nick Timberlake can't hit the broad side of a barn. I mean, he hit the top of the backboard with a jump shot today. I don't know how many times I've seen a player on a baseline jumper hit the top of the backboard. Um, it just goes to show you what it's been like for him this season. Just can't buy a basket. And so this KU team now goes into March ice cold, right? They've really struggled shooting from three the last couple games. They are banking on Kevin McCuller and Hunter Dickinson getting back. McCuller will play in the NCAA tournament. Dickinson KU is putting out the signs that he's going to play. Bill Self hopes that by the weekend he'll be back doing some stuff in practice and maybe by Monday he's able to be cleared to do a lot more and that way he can get some full contact practice days in before KU opens the NCAA tournament. But it kind of feels like some maybe wishful thinking to expect Kansas to be at the level that we saw when they were healthy back in November and December. You think about the game against UConn, you think about the game against Kentucky, and going into Maui and playing a really good Tennessee team. That feels like a long time ago, and it doesn't feel like we've seen that level from KU as consistently. There is the Houston game, you know, KU beats Baylor, but those are inside Allen Fieldhouse, and there are no Allen Fieldhouse games, and as a result of KU's struggles right now, the chances of KU going to Omaha is a little bit less, and I don't think that's going to be where KU ends up playing. And that means it's a faraway game and a faraway trip, and I know Kansas fans will show up wherever, but it will not be the same type of atmosphere as you would have seen if it was in Omaha, where it would feel like a home game. So it's kind of this tough situation now for KU where you're banking on health, they're banking on finding some confidence. Um, and you just don't know if it's going to come, and you don't know if it's going to happen. And so, you know, for KU, it's kind of a you hope, and you know, they're going to hope and pray that 
they're going to be able to do it and go on a run. But I'm a little skeptical right now. So we'll have to see where KU ends up. Obviously, I'm really interested to see the location in the region. It looks like maybe going to one of the coasts is probably the most likely destination for KU. But even that first weekend, right, where are they going to play? Because if, it, if KU somehow does get Omaha, that's a huge win, and that would boost KU's chances of getting out of the first week. And because there would be the opportunity for Kansas fans to help lift this team. Um, and if it's far away, we'll have to see. This is a team that's going to be very matchup dependent. If Kansas plays a team in the first or second round that has a loafing center, not very athletic, they play at a slow pace, Kansas will have a very good chance of winning that game because that fits into the style of what Kansas can do. But if they go against a team that has a really athletic five-man, they jack up a lot of threes like BYU, like I think everybody that's followed Kansas can see that that probably is not going to be a great recipe for the Jayhawks. So um, really interested for Selection Sunday. Really interested to see how this is going to play out. This team is talented. You can't rule out any sort of run for them because of the talent. But if we're looking at the trend line here, I can't remember a Bill Self team struggling this much down the stretch of a season. I really can't. I'm really struggling. So I'll be fascinated to see how this team is able to fare in March. Only one more guaranteed game left this season. Um, we'll have to see how Kansas does. So as always, stay tuned to Fog.net. Got you covered with all sorts of coverage, um, both basketball and football. Spring football starts on Tuesday, so a lot going on. So make sure you're staying tuned to the website.